Double crossers. GOP Congress just declares war on conservatives, Republicans will attempt and. Recently, a report began drifting around that Trump is going to end Obama's unconstitutional DACA program. Extraordinary news and the satisfaction of a major campaign promise. In any case, there could be a hitch in that plan. It would seem that Congress, led by a few Republicans, will attempt and get a bill through that gives those dreamers amnesty. This is what's going down. Vi Gateway Pundit, after failing to repeal the Obamacare Republican senators led by anti-Trump Senator Tom Tillis from North Carolina are working on legislation to give dreamers amnesty. McClatchy reported, conservative lawmakers led by Tom Tillis are crafting a bill they call the Conservative Dream Act that would provide a path to permanent residence for people brought here illegally as children offering President Donald Trump an escape hatch on one of his most vexing immigration challenges. The legislation creates an avenue for Trump to both fulfill a campaign promise to end the Obama-era program known as DACA while yielding to what appears to be his personal desire to let these immigrants stay in the country. Who cares about DACA if there is a DREAM Act, said a Republican involved with the policy talks and aware of Tillis' plan. With companions like that who needs adversaries. It's exceptionally peculiar that there are Republicans out there who are so amped up for amnesty. Tom Tillis was sent to D.C. after voters in North Carolina said no thanks to the horrendous Gay Hagan. What's more, from that point forward, Tillis hasn't done much to make them proud. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Young Cons Revealed. Shocking proof just erupts, Obama lied to America for eight years. Everybody realizes that amid Obama's presidency, employments, monetary numbers were continually distorted to influence him to look great. Advantageously, vital metrics were overlooked by his attendants in the Labor Department as well as by his lapdogs in the media, who should examine these sorts of things. Things like labor participation rate and tallying the people that have stopped looking for work by and large would have caused the joblessness number to soar. Yet, Obama and the left couldn't have that. So they lied, consistently, concealing the genuine strength of our economy and the dismal substances that accompany conceding the certainties about work metrics. Egotistically, the president bragged about his job numbers, advising his critics to check for themselves. All things considered. Many have, and the numbers demonstrate his pundits were more than correct. As detailed at Yes I'm Right, after Trump won the election and organizations started promising to return and keep jobs in the U.S., Josh Ernest, Obama's press secretary, reduced Trump's pre-presidential triumphs, saying, there were 805,000 manufacturing jobs that were not just protected, but actually created while President Obama was in office. A bold claim and a complete lie. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, before Obama's disastrous presidency began in 2009, there were 12.561 million manufacturing jobs in the U.S. As of November 2016, that number had fallen to 12.26 million jobs. Which, as indicated by the laws of first-grade arithmetic, would imply that more than 300,000 assembling discounted were lost amid his administration. The inquiry at that point turns out to be, how on earth did Josh not really earnest thought of such a ludicrous number? Indeed, he did what the left dependably does, by winding and twisting things to fit the story. His strategy was unfortunately unscrupulous, as he just glanced back at Obama's eight years in office and found the point where producing jobs were at their lowest which was in 2010 at 11.453 million. That is where he began counting jobs created by Obama after the president's garbage policies had effectively shaved off 1.1 million jobs. This sort of mysterious bookkeeping is the thing that the left's about and why you ought to never believe any numbers that originate from the left, or truly, any government official so far as that is concerned. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Yes I'm right. New Discovery Look what State Department gave Hillary during past year. 
approaching state mysteries is an uncommon and to a great degree abnormal benefit and ought not to be trifled with by those given that benefit. Just people and organizations who really need to know classified information are raised to speed. However, having that data likewise implies taking consideration that it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. One needs to stay away from awesome harm to America's national security, which could trade off the well-being of the American individuals, as well as those operators working covers to ensure that data. Hillary Clinton's past email careless activities ought to have precluded her from until kingdom come being permitted to deal with state insider facts, particularly since she is no longer Secretary of State. Get ready to be stunned. Hillary and her top helpers all still have exceptional status even while she's under scrutiny by the State Department. Circa News reports, the State Department is still investigating former Secretary Hillary Clinton's email scandal, meaning she and her top aides continued to keep their security clearances a year after the FBI concluded they recklessly transmitted top-secret and other classified intelligence through an insecure email server. The revelation was contained in correspondence released Friday by Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Charles Grassley. R. Iowa, who expressed concern about the slow place of the department's bureaucratic process. The State Department confirmed that it is continuing to review the mishandling of classified information that passed through Secretary Hillary Clinton's unauthorized email server as she and seven former aides retain access to sensitive information, Grassley's office said. Grassley's office said the seven aides were able to keep security clearances because the department designated them as research assistants allowing them to take their State Department to shoot clearance with them after their official service at the department. Hillary was extremely careless in who she permitted to deal with arranged archives, notwithstanding utilizing her maid to print out messages, as revealed by the New York Post. As Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton routinely asked her maid to print out sensitive government emails and documents, including ones containing classified information, from her house in Washington, D.C emails and FBI memos show. But the housekeeper lacked the security clearance to handle such material. In fact, Marina Santos was called on so frequently to receive emails that she may hold the secrets to emailgate, if only the FBI and Congress would subpoena her and the equipment she used. PLS asked Marina to print for me and am. Clinton emailed Top Hate Huma Aben regarding a redacted 2011 message marked sensitive but unclassified. In a classified 2012 email dealing with the new president of Malawi, another Clinton aide, Monica Hanley, advised Clinton, We can ask Marina to print this. Revisions to the Iran points was the subject line of a classified April 2012 email to Clinton from Hanley. In it, the text reads, Marina is trying to print for you. Both classified emails were marked confidential, the tier below secret or top secret. Evidently, it is path past the time when Hillary's freedom ought to have been renounced. In reality, that ought to have occurred when her residency as Secretary of State finished. She ought to never be permitted any place close state privilege insights or it can be practically ensured she will let each Tom, Dick, and Harry see them. The lady has no ethical respectability and she's too unsafe to possibly be forgotten in the city, unsupervised. Is it a lot to approach that she be indicted for any of her many wrongdoings that we know about? What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Gateway You won't believe what illegal immigrants are getting for free now. Taxpayers are furious to learn that they are getting 100% of their President Trump has promised to shield Americans from the aftermath of illegal immigration. Liberals, however, are resolved to protect individuals who are here unlawfully. They overlook the numerous issues illicit movement causes. That, as well as they, appear to be compensating criminal outsiders with benefits that residents are denied. This most recent privilege is certain to make each parent, and student, incensed. Vibriate Bart Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, has announced that they will fund 100% of financial aid packages for students who are in the country illegally. Although international students are expected to pay full tuition, 
undocumented undergraduate students at Emory will have 100% of demonstrated financial need covered by the university. Emory meets 100% of the demonstrated financial need for undergraduate undocumented students, with or without DACA, who are admitted as first-year, first-degree-seeking students, and who graduated from a U.S. high school through a combination of grants and scholarships, institutional work-study, DACA students only, and institutional loans. Undocumented students without DACA status can receive an institutional loan in place of a typical work-study award. The university's website states. Speaking to the college fix, Megan McCranny, a spokeswoman for Emory, said that providing full financial relief relief to undocumented students reflects the university's commitment to welcoming students from diverse backgrounds. Beyond any doubt. Along these lines, in case you're a legitimate American citizen, who strive to graduate secondary school and get accepted into college, you're in a tight spot. In case you're a legitimate foreigner, who strive to get accepted into a school, as well as pay some dues to get a visa, you're likewise in a tight spot. In any case, in case you're an illegal alien? Somebody who is breaking U.S. law to be in America? Try not to stress, Emory University will utilize its limited funds to provide you with a free ride. Why should an American university utilize their funds, including government grants and alumni contributions? to give the full educational cost to offenders. They request that individuals who are here legitimately pay their high costs, however unlawfuls get a pass. It's that sort of in reverse, counterintuitive, and absurd imagining that is driving liberals into insignificance. Do they truly figure Americans will be ready regarding such hogwash? That sort of broken belief system, of offering gifts to outsiders, is what's annihilating Europe at this moment. However, Emory supposes they can escape with it here. Maybe ICE will be going by their grounds in the not-so-distant future. Maybe they will be taking a gander at their enlistment. In any case, graduated class and guardians ought to be reevaluating giving more than a huge number of dollars to this treasonous institution. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Briet Bart